So let's make a spherical pressure vessel that's three feet in diameter and it has quarter inch steel walls. The first thing we need to do is make a sphere. So I'll start with a three point arc and I'll click the endpoints and I'll bring it out. And what we're going to do is revolve this arc. I'll complete the half circle. We're going to take this arc and rotate it 360 degrees around that. I'll do that by features and I'll revolve this arc around this line. So the axis of revolution is this line. I've got a 360 degrees blind. I'll click OK. And now I've got my sphere. I can rotate it around if I want to. If I look at a cross-sectional view of this, I could tell we could tell that it's a solid sphere. And we need to make this sphere hollow for the next part of it. So what I'll do, we'll close this off. And I'll use this command called shell. And the part that I want, let's set the uh, thickness of the material. that We want a quarter inch. And I'll click on the sphere. And it turns out this is not uh, the first box up here. It says faces to remove. We actually don't want to remove any faces. So I'm going to delete it there. And right here is what we want. So I'm going to click the sphere down in here. And I'll set this to a quarter inch and click OK. And now when I do the cross-sectional view, we can see uh, the sphere is a quarter inch steel all the way around. One thing I haven't done was set the uh, exterior diameter to three feet. So let's go in here. We'll edit the sketch. And I'll dimension this line to be three feet long. OK on that. I'll rebuild it. And now you can see the quarter inch uh, diameter of the steel is in proportion to the, the steel. So I could click this uh, cross-sectional view again if I want to and bring it out. We could look at uh, different uh, aspects of the sphere. Incidentally, if you want to know what the other command does for the uh, shell, I'll click shell again. And this was a hull of a, a boat I was playing around with. But let's just do a tenth of an inch. If I click here, I can remove, I'll remove that face. And I've now removed this, the uh, side of the hull. If I go back to edit definition, instead of removing that face, if I clicked up here, and I'll clear this selection. And if I do that, I've removed the uh, top surface of the boat. Now notice it doesn't make the boat hollow. It just removes the top surface of it. But if I wanted to, I could delete that. And uh, I'll just choose this down in this multi-thickness setting. And I'll click OK on that. It looks like nothing's happened. But again, I can do a cross-sectional view on it. And we could see into the uh, interior of the boat. It didn't remove any of the, the external, uh, external material, but it did make it hollow. Come back to the sphere. Let's turn, off, turn that off. Next thing we need to make are uh, some feet for the sphere to, to sit on. And this is only, uh, it's important because of num for numerical stability when we run the finite element analysis. So let's make uh, some feet at the bottom. So I'll make a reference geometry from the top plane. If I want to, I can hold the plane, I can hold the control button down and move the mouse a little bit. Now I'm, I've got it into this view and let's say the top plane will make it, I don't know, uh, two feet below the uh, center of the sphere. It's up here. I'll click flip. Puts my reference plane down there. Let's just make it, I don't know, we can make it 20 inches maybe. Get a little bit closer. So that, I'm going to, what I will end up doing is sketching on this plane. So we'll sketch on there. Control A to make it normal to that surface. And let's make these uh, circular feet. I'll put the first one right here. And I'm going to do a circular pattern. So we'll do where it says linear sketch pattern, we actually want a circular sketch pattern. So I'm going to take that circle uh, where it's set right now. I'm going to do it 360 degrees. Let's make six to make it a um, nice even number, I guess. Click OK on that. I've got the six different things. Now I'm going to go features. I'll extrude these. And we're going to go from the sketch plane. And instead of doing it blind, where you set the, uh, the distance for the extrude, here we'll orient the sphere with the feet down below it. We'll go, we'll click up to next. And what that does is it automatically senses the next surface above it. And now I'm, I'm generating my legs. I'll click OK on that. And now I've got the uh, six legs. If we wanted to, we could look, do a cross-sectional view of this. And the legs themselves, they, uh, they are solid members. So what we'll end up doing, we'll run the finite element analysis by pressurizing the inside of this vessel and uh, see what happens. The material here, let's uh, make it, we'll make it alloy steel. And I'll get rid of that cross-sectional view so we can get a good look at everything. So now that we've got everything configured, we'll do another static study. And let's start by fixing the feet of our sphere. So I'll just do a fixed geometry on all six of these faces. Next thing we need is an external load. Let's do a pressure. And one of the things, it's hard. We can't select the face. Like, where do we want to apply the pressure? This would be an example of atmospheric pressure pushing inward on the sphere. We can't get at it from this view. So let's go to the cross-sectional view. We'll open it up. That allows us to select the interior of it. So I'll, go, uh, I'll apply a pressure to the inside of the sphere. 
Now when I zoom around, we can see the, uh, the arrow is actually acting throughout the inside inner walls of the sphere. Let's do PSI. I have no, I guess I don't have a really good feel. Let's try a thousand PSI inside this valve, so we'll see if it's going to explode or not. And then we'll click OK on that. I think that's all we need. Let's run it and see if it works. Yep, here it goes. So we could see that the sphere, it suggested it, this is an exaggerated view, but the sphere got bigger. It pushed all of these uh, hinges out. Of course, it's quite a bit exaggerated, but we'll do results and define factor of safety plot. We'll do it for everything and click OK there. And now go chart options. Let's do on the low end, the low factor of safety, let's just set a low end of zero and the upper end of two. Anything beyond two will be uh, fine with us. And I'll do floating no significant figures. I'm going to do a user defined profile with three. And the low end, low factor of safety uh, signals a red value that we, we're, being in, we're in trouble. And then I'll do blue for anything that's uh, safe, anything above uh, two. So I'll dial this back there. Notice on the right hand side my factor of safety running from zero to two. Presently everything has a factor of safety over two. I'll click OK. We can get in on the cross section of it to see how everything was going in there. We can't, uh, can't do it right away. I'll go back to static and show this plot again. And you'll see there's no way to do it with this cross sectional view. So what you really want to do to see the interior of it, let's do section clipping. And we'll clip it right down the middle so we can see it. And the factor of safety in the interior of the vessel looks about the same as the exterior of it. So let's try this. We'll jack the pressure up. Let's go, instead of 1,000 PSI, let's try 2,000 PSI. And I'll rerun the simulation. Ha. So the factor of safety now, we're starting to come down from 2. We're approaching 1 in some of these areas. Now I've just increased the pressure to 3,000 PSI. And naturally, we're getting uh, more. Uh, the factor of safety is becoming less, smaller and smaller. And here, we're, we're looking below 1. Here it is at a pressure of 2,000 PSI. We still have a, a factor of safety a little bit higher than that. So in this, let's go We'll right click and go probe. And we could do at location, or actually, we could probably do on selected entities. When I do on selected entities, I got rid of the section view. I want to click on not the exterior face, but I'm just curious if we'll do, if we can do the inside face. So I'll right click and I'll say select other. And this allows me to select a different face. And I'll click update on that could show a graph of it. This shows a factor of safety. What I observe, a factor of safety by and large is right around 1.2, so a 20% factor of safety. And this may or may not be reasonable for your, your design processes, but it could, it, the simulation suggests that it definitely could hold uh, a pressure of 2,000 PSI with this geometry.